Good morning, everyone. It is so fantastic to be here. Really looking forward to chatting today about how Microsoft is seeing the AI opportunity, the AI landscape. And first, before I get started, I really want to thank Fong for the very kind and warm introduction. Like I said, it is absolutely fantastic to be here today. So again, my name is Ken Miller. I've been at Microsoft now for about 21 years. I currently run a high-tech vertical with about 400 customers that consist of enterprise customers, digital natives, and of course, ISVs like MicroStrategy. I live in office out of the San Francisco Bay Area, and living in the Bay Area and working for Microsoft has actually been a treat over the years because there are so many early adopters of technology, so many startups spinning up, bringing new technologies to market, also gives me great insights into the competitive landscape. I live miles away from Google, Oracle, Salesforce, AWS, et cetera. So that keeps it fun and interesting. I've had a lot of different experiences at Microsoft over the years. Going back to 2010 as an example, I started working on Azure, our public cloud offering. Saw tons of transformation customers moving on-prem to the cloud, was involved in a lot of transformational partnerships. But believe me when I tell you that there is nothing that I've seen in my 21 years at Microsoft that compares to anything that we're seeing on the AI front. So a lot of times people will ask, you know, what's happening? What's the Gen AI, Gen AI opportunity? Everyone in this audience has probably seen reports from Gartner, Accenture, et cetera, with a bunch of different stats about the impact of Gen AI. I'm not gonna focus on numbers or stats today because we could probably all convince ourselves that there's a massive market opportunity. I'll give you an example though. People ask me all the time, like, hey, Ken, so like you work for Microsoft, you got all this AI stuff happening, give me an example of how you're using it. So I'll make it real for you. I flew in yesterday from the San Francisco Bay Area, went to the conference, met with a bunch of people, had dinner last night with a colleague, went back to my hotel room, and I did that dreaded thing that we all do, fired up Outlook, and I'm just watching the inbox meter spin, 246 unread emails. So I typed this prompt into Outlook, summarized my inbox for me. A minute later, I had a beautiful summary of my inbox. I mean, it literally works. Super cool, awesome stuff. Then I entered another prompt. I said, summarize all of the high importance emails that are in my inbox with my name on the two line. A minute later, I get this output. There are 15 emails from my mother-in-law asking for her Wi-Fi password. Unbelievable. I mean, how many people in the audience can relate to that? We're like shadow IT for our mother-in-law, right? Like, it's the story of my life. It's unbelievable. Um, on a serious note, that I will tell you that, you know, to Satya's credit, he saw this market opportunity many, many years ago. We've been focused on AI and ML and a lot of these technologies for years. But back in 2019, Satya made an investment. Microsoft, Satya made an investment in OpenAI. I was actually part of that initial deal team that worked on that partnership. And in full transparency, at the time, I had no idea who OpenAI, who OpenAI was. We followed that up again by another investment a year later for another billion dollars, and we've been investing heavily ever since. As a result of that, we've been able to make tremendous progress in this space. And we're not doing it alone. That's really the key takeaway for me, that it's our partners like MicroStrategy that are adopting these technologies, they're innovating, and they're making it real. So I love this quote, uh, you know, Fresh Current, Forrester, April 2024. For me, it's really the last sentence here. The longer you wait, the further you will be behind. If you're not adopting AI today, I guarantee your competitors are, other companies are, and they're going to ultimately take share. They're going to drive more type, top line revenue. They will see more cu customer adoption. It's happening all around us. And again, the question, is AI real, Ken? How often are you seeing it? Are you still using chat GPT at cocktail parties to write poems? 
not the case. Last week, during our earnings call, Satya said that 65% of the Fortune 500 are now using the Azure OpenAI service. Pretty incredible if you ask me. We haven't been at this that long, and you've got 65% of the Fortune 500 now using the Azure OpenAI service. And I guarantee you that's growing daily. We're seeing more and more companies actually move from on-prem to the cloud as a result of AI. A lot of our customers that we have that were reluctant to move to the cloud, to modernize, to migrate, they now see this as a huge opportunity. So again, more and more and more momentum with migrations. I can tell you that we're seeing a significant uptick in our business at Microsoft. During our earnings call last week, Sachi also said that the number of our $100 million plus Azure opportunities is up 80% year over year. The number of $10 million deals that we're seeing has doubled since last year. So there's a ton of adoption. We're moving very quickly. We're working with partners like MicroStrategy, and the innovation is what's driving the consumption on Azure and the primary reason why we're seeing these meters spin so quickly. I'll give you a couple other examples just to make this real. There are four kind of case studies on this slide. I don't have time to go through all of them today. All of this is public information. And what I, I would encourage you to go online as time allows and take a look at you know, what the white papers and case studies that exist because they're real customer scenarios. I'm going to talk about two very briefly today. The first one is PepsiCo, a brand that everyone has heard of, familiar with, snacks, sodas, et cetera. They wanted to predict demand so that they had inventory in grocery stores kind of real time and not have inventory sitting in warehouses. No one wants to wake up on Super Bowl Sunday, go to their local grocery store, and see empty shelves. They were consuming data from a bunch of different disparate data sets, probably running various filters in Excel, and they were doing a pretty good job. It took countless hours every day, every week. Frontline workers burnt out from going through that exercise and they really weren't able to predict accurately what demand would look like. They started working with Azure AI and machine learning, game changer, much, much better customer experiences. They were able to predict demand much more effectively, so it was a win-win. But for me, though, it's not just about the ability to predict demand. Think about all of those frontline workers that are now no longer sitting in front of a screen focused on Excel spreadsheets, but rather have the opportunity, opportunity to work on more strategic projects. The second example is really near and dear to my heart. It's regarding John, John Hopkins. And you can see here that they believe they could save 30,000 lives per year by leveraging AI to detect cancer. Rather than use the human eye, they believe, again, that they could leverage AI to detect pancreatic cancer very early in the cycle. The reason that's kind of near and dear to my heart is that my father passed away recently from prostate cancer. And when I read this, I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be a miracle if AI existed like it does today five years ago, if it was prominent then, could they have detected my dad's prostate cancer sooner and extended his life? So again, AI is not only impacting technology, but it's impacting all industries, including healthcare, right? That's why I wanted to cite that example. So I want to talk about our partnership, the Microsoft and MicroStrategy partnership. Microsoft has always been a partner-led company. Many folks in the audience today probably know that. You've probably worked with Microsoft over the years. We've been very focused on, on partners. Any of you that attended conferences years ago when Steve Ballmer was our CEO, he'd get on stage. I'm not going to do it today because I would embarrass myself, but he would literally like jump up and down and just scream, partner, partner, partner. So the point is, we've been very focused on partners for a long time. From a partnership perspective between Microsoft and MicroStrategy, we have deep engineering roadmaps that we're working on together. So we have engineering integration between the two companies. It's super, super important. Right, so that we could essentially build solutions together that benefit all of our joint customers. MicroStrategy already has deep integrations with your favorite apps. I talked about some of the M365 apps earlier, but when you think about like Outlook, Teams, other M365 apps, 
That's, that's already happened today. We're working together currently. MicroStrategy is part of a developer program that will allow them to build a plugin for Copilot so you can access data from the semantic graph in Teams. This is huge. It's a game changer for users. It's a game changer for MicroStrategy customers. It's a game changer for Microsoft all up. Very, very significant. So to summarize, we are using the comprehensive set of cloud services, AI investments, and robust security to really bolster our all up partnership. Our partnership with MicroStrategy and with other partners, of course, they all run on trust. At Microsoft, we are committed to security, privacy, and compliance across everything we do. I think we've set a lot of industry standards. Um, again, I mean, you can go out and do your own research and come back and let me know what you think, but I, I do think that we've set the bar in terms of excellence around security, privacy, compliance across all of our cloud offerings. The other thing that's super important here is that data is what fuels AI. Everyone here probably understands that. You need to, when you work with a partner, whether it's a hyperscaler or any other partner, you really got to double click on what they're doing with your data. It's your data. It's not our data. It's your data. We don't use your data to train our AI, AI models. Your data is protected every step along the way. Okay? Super important point. Those are the questions you have to ask. Last but not least, about six or eight months ago, we issued a customer copyright or a statement regarding a customer copyright commitment. Brad Smith, who's the president of Microsoft, has written several articles about this. Essentially, we are protecting our customers with a very deep, detailed customer copyright commitment. It's a game changer, and again, it just shows how we are innovating in the AI space uh, for the betterment of all of our customers. So check that out as time allows. So I also want to spend a couple of minutes regarding kind of our all-up partnership between Microsoft and MicroStrategy. As I mentioned earlier, I've got a vertical with 400 customers. Very few of those 400 customers are deemed top-tier partners. MicroStrategy is a top-tier partner. What that means is they get more attention, more investment, and quite honestly, more love from Microsoft. They've earned that. You can take their solutions, the MicroStrategy solutions, you could buy them through the Azure marketplace. It's very seamless, very simple way. It increases the time to market. You could essentially go to the Azure marketplace, buy these solutions, and you could decrement your existing commitments to Microsoft. So if a customer has a $10 million commitment to Azure with Microsoft, they could use that commitment to purchase solutions in our Azure marketplace. We also align our, our global sales force. We've got probably 20,000 Microsoft field sellers across the world, local language, local currency, that are all compensated for reselling these solutions. So there's a deep partnership in the field as well from a go-to-market perspective. All right, so just to wrap this up, I want to just run through a few points here. I think it's fair to say that Microsoft has been a trailblazer in AI. Hopefully some of what I've talk, talked about today resonates with you and you would agree that we've been innovating rapidly, we've been blazing the trail. I think it's also fair to say that MicroStrategy has been a trailblazer as well. If you think about kind of their decision to blaze the trail with Bitcoin, extremely unique. I don't know of any other public companies that are set up the way MicroStrategy is with the Bitcoin investment as well as having you know, businesses that are driving revenue and taking share at the same time. They're blazing that trail. MicroStrategy was also the first customer to come to us when we started making announcements with OpenAI and making Azure OpenAI commercially, commercially available. They were one of the first customers to come to us and say, hey, we want to innovate with you. They're blazing the trail, for sure. I think that leveraging our partnership allows you to future-proof all of your AI investments. That's super important for the long term. You're working with MicroStrategy, top tier player. You're working with Microsoft, top tier player. All of your AI initiatives or investments are future proofed. What I'd say in closing is this. As a mutual customer, you're now poised to be a trailblazer. You have that opportunity. The opportunity is yours, and we're thrilled at the chance to partner with you on this journey. Thank you very much for your time today. I hope everyone has a great conference. Feel free to reach out with any questions. You've got my LinkedIn profile there. Take care, everyone. Thank you.